able to, to use the TPM and the USB, by the way. The TPM's really good at keeping secrets and provides some really important technology um, and, and capabilities. The most, most uh, obvious uh, benefit is by allowing us to leverage something called the static root of trust measurement. And what that is, is a technical term, if you will, for taking a snapshot of the pre-boot environment. Mm -hmm. And if anything has changed in the pre-boot environment, and if someone's messed with the BIOS, they've tried to fiddle with the master boot record, they've diddled around with the bootloader or the boot uh, mugger, whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and these, by the way, are files that have to be stored on the unencrypted partition as a part of the correct. boot up process. So that is not encrypted, so it is accessible by someone who might stumble across a laptop That's or correct. a desktop. That's great. You're absolutely right. So BitLocker requires two partitions, effectively. Mm -hmm. One small partition in which that boot code exists. That's kind of a, a requirement, when you think about it, um, that stems from the PCAT, PCAT infrastructure. The PCAT infrastructure basically has a set of, of uh, 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 requirements. Uh, BIOS comes into memory. Uh, 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 basic input output systems, what BIOS stands for, and it's really the thing that gets a machine up and running. And one of its jobs is to go check hardware and make sure memory is okay and do memory tests optionally and get the process into a certain state and say hello to the world as power comes into itself. And its job then is to load off an absolute um, location on the disk uh, the true disk bootstrap, which is called the master boot record. The master boot record job is to continue this kind of knee bones connected to the thigh bone boot logic and load the next um, uh, 15, 16 sectors of, of data, uh, uh, eight, you know, a very small uh, uh, amount of memory, uh, into, uh, into memory, execute it, and then continue down the boot path. Be because we couldn't change all the biases in the world, and it would be ridiculous right. to do so, um, clearly there's a requirement that certain pieces and portions of the disk remain in the clear, and, and that's true for BitLocker and, and as far as I'm aware, all, all, all other solutions that, that do full volume encryption. So rather than trying to do clever, weird and wonderful tricks, uh, you know, trying to create containers that are in the clear and, and other jiggery pokery, um, you know, we, we, we decided to stick to a, a well-known 20 plus year old container model called a partition. Well, they've been around for uh, as long as disks have, the whole concept of a partition. So BitLocker does require two partitions, a, a little one in which this small amount of code exists, and then the other one, or other ones, which you would like to protect. Okay. And that code was what I was describing. Mm -hmm. That stuff can get measured with a TPM, but it can't be measured if you use a USB stick and have no TPM. Because it's the physical TPM chip that checks that those files have not been molested in or, or fiddled with in any way. And does it do uh, like a, a hashing process and it stores the hash codes on the TPM chip as a part of that? It or? doesn't actually, you're absolutely correct that it does do a hashing process, but it doesn't retain values. Effectively what occurs is something as follows. The TPM chip measures BIOS and that becomes a magic number that gets put into a pigeonhole, it's called a PCR, a location if you will. It then will measure the master boot record, and that goes in, a magic number goes somewhere. This continues for all, all other components, and all these magic numbers get extended, is the, is the term, so that they can't be unwound. So as you create a magic number, you measure it, a number goes in there, the contents of that pigeonhole plus something else gets measured. So, so it's you, all additive. You're, it's, it's completely additive. When you ask the TPM to seal something, in other words, make a secret, make this secret, you give the TPM the thing that you want to make secret, it seals it, encrypts it, if you will, and the state of what the numbers are in all these various pigeonholes becomes part of the entropy that seals it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's also part of the entropy that's required to unseal it. So what happens is, when you turn on BitLocker, you give the secret, the, um, the operating system gives the secret, the secret being the key that's actually used to encrypt, encrypt and decrypt the blocks on the disk. Uh, you give a secret, you wrap that up, we actually have a key obfuscation model, key abstraction layer, and then we give that abstraction to, um, uh, to the TPM, and it effectively encrypts or seals the secret, it, it seals this blob of data, and um, gives us back that encrypted blob, and we store that on the disk. Okay. As the machine boots, um, the boot process um, says to the TPM, please remeasure, so it doesn't remember those numbers. So it's told to re-measure those numbers, so it repopulates those pigeonholes, if you will. Okay. We then give the secret back to the TPM. The TPM, an atomic operation actually inside the silicon, can unseal that secret, assuming 
all the values in all these registers, all these pigeonholes, haven't changed. Okay. So if I change the BIOS or I change the master boot record or something else, in an attempt to put some code in there to sniff the secret, I actually change the contents of one of the pigeonholes, and I never actually get the secret out. Okay. So it's quite a it's quite a cool way of, of adding some protection. Yeah, that is interesting. But you can use a USB stick on its own, and you can use the TPM and a USB stick to provide multi-factor preboot. Excellent, excellent. So you you've mentioned keys several times. True. So I have this picture, obviously, of a key to my house. I stick it into the lock. I turn it, and if it's the right key, it turns and opens the door. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is the format of these keys? I mean, is this some weird thing, or is it like our product installation keys almost? Well, so the um, keys, the various key options, um, the keys being tied to the strength of encryption that's used to encrypt the disk. Mm -hmm. Bitlocker gives you a couple of options. You can use, uh, they're AES keys ultimately, but a keys just some bits of data, if you will. Um, you can have 256 bits, you can have 128 bits, other algorithms support larger numbers. Um, but the bottom line is we leverage AES, BitLocker Drive Encryption Technology, the actual blocks and clusters encrypted, leveraging um, the uh, well-known and documented and um, FIPS compliant algorithms. It uses AES uh, using either 128 or 256 bit keys. Mm -hmm. um, there are other keys that are required. Um, and we strongly recommend that when a, an enterprise rolls out BitLocker, they leverage uh, an option to escrow a recovery key. Oh, good, because that was going to be my next question. Oh. So do we leave the keys solely in the control of the person who is BitLocking their laptop, or do we have some sort of a key management system that, let's just take this scenario. I, I'm a disgruntled employee. I have BitLocked my machine and there is important data for my team, projects, whatever on this laptop. What happens to that data? I've left, I've got my USB keychain, the TPM chip is, as you've very clearly stated, pretty well locked down. We're not gonna be able to hack into it. So how do we get that data that's important to the organization it's a good, back? It's a great, great question. And um, we recognize that as an important scenario for enterprises and, and designed in the answer that, uh, from, 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 from the very beginning. The, an enterprise, when they enable the BitLocker technology, has the option, and I highly recommend you take it, of escrowing a recovery key. The recovery keys are a blob of data that will allow um, a, an application, including the bootloader itself, which has a recovery console built into it, or other recovery code that allows you to access a drive um, either if a user refuses to give you their username and password, the scenario mm -hmm. you gave, or in, or in event of an accident, um, if that key or, or recovery password it, it, it is given to it. And when you turn on BitLocker, when, you, when, you, when, when you've made this option, this recovery key will be automatically escrowed into active directories, that is the most common model. Um, we actually have an extensible model that allows organizations to, to do something else. They could um, uh, perhaps create a, a model where the recovery key is uh, escrowed to uh, a database or something, mm -hmm. whatever. But, but, but the, the, the bottom line is, without exception so far, uh, enterprises that I've spoken to have chosen to, to leverage Active Directory, their investment in Active Directory, and um, uh, BitLocker keys are automatically escrowed uh, into AD. Um, let, me, let me give you a quick example of how that might work in a recovery scenario. I, I'm going to pick one mildly less contentious than the one you gave me. <laughs> okay. But let's say um, you and I are going to go do a presentation at a customer and um, I've got a really important PowerPoint deck on my laptop and uh, I'm a bit of a klutz and I drop my laptop and break the screen and I don't have it in any other place. And mm -hmm. We're at the customer site and I need to be able to give this presentation. Yep. This, this drive still works, we just can't see it on the screen. Drive still works, the screen is broken. So I pull the hard drive out of my machine and put it into your machine. Mm -hmm. Well, your machine also has a TPM, let's say. But your t every TPM has some unique identifying information in it. So when I go to boot my hard drive in your machine, basically what happens is the secret I described earlier cannot be unlocked. Mm -hmm. right? Because part of the process that creates the magic numbers that goes in, in, into each of these pigeonholes is based on the uniqueness of each TPM. Mm -hmm. So your TPM cannot unlock my secret. Basically what will happen then automatically, the recovery agent that's actually built into the boot code will present itself on the screen and say, I can't unlock, give me the recovery key. Mm -hmm. Now when I turned on my machine, 
um, our, our enterprise had set the uh, option that BitLocker wouldn't actually activate until 